hello everyone today in this uh, video we'll be covering the second uh, topic which is hdfs basics in the previous topic we have covered i mean in the previous video we have covered introduction to hadoop right so uh, in this video we'll be covering the important questions regarding this uh, and there are totally five important questions which are worth eight to ten marks okay so before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have any doubt ping me on instagram okay so let's get started with hdfs uh, basics so the first important question is uh, what is the brief uh, intro about HDFS if they ask you about the brief intro of HDFS what you are supposed to write firstly you will be writing what is HDFS like it is a distributed file system Hadoop distributed file system was designed for big data processing basically why it is used for that's the first point you will be writing after that you will be writing what it is capable of it is capable of supporting many users simultaneously the big data gets processed and that too it gets uh, processed uh, parallelly and it is similar to Google file system is your third point okay and HDFS uh, size typically uh, 64 MB or 128 MB okay like uh, one uh, file uh, data block in it so these are the four points which you will be uh, writing for the intro of HDFS a uh, separate questions won't be asked uh, like uh, uh, write a brief intro about HDFS in uh, connection with some other question it will be given so you are supposed to write these four points moving on to the second important question which is the name node and the data node what is the differences between them and how it, they are interrelated this is uh, a very important question from exam point of view so HDFS is based on two important uh, type of nodes which is name node and data node by the name itself you can understand like name node means it will be having a name and uh, it, it, what it will do is it will manage all the resources it's like a manager okay name node is a manager data node will have what data obviously data node will have data so it will have uh, the name node will have the metadata of what type of data is stored here like for example if the numbers are stored here in this what it will be stored is integers means for example it will be storing integer values are stored in this data block so what happens in the first point you'll be writing is name node manages all the metadata data needed to store and retrieve the actual data from the data node no data is actually stored in the name node name node does not store any data but it manages all the data fine so see here here is the name node here is the client and secondary node these two are interconnected and these two are interconnected client sends a request to the name node name node fetches the data from the data nodes and uh, it will take help from the secondary node here the data will be stored now coming to few important concepts here name node will do the access modification managing replication of data it also determines how many blocks of data are to be allocated this is what is the function of uh, name node coming to the data node it stores the actual data in it it could be read to access and uh, used for execution the node uh, the data transfer operations have been performed upon it and data node act acknowledges the file block replication this is another important concept which will be discussing in the upcoming question so a uh, file, uh, file block uh, replication is done using the data node and it informs that the uh, operation is completed the reading the data between happens in a similar fashion the client access the data directly from the data node so basically data node is just storing the data and all the operations which are to be performed upon the data node are uh, getting performed and uh, the name node uh, does all those operations right like access modification manual uh, managing and replication Moving on to the third important question which is uh, explain block replication and safe mode in HDFS two super important questions if they ask you about block replication what you are supposed to write is first you have to write whenever the HDFS writes a file whenever a HDFS writes a file suppose that I wrote a file it is replicated across the cluster means this file is not just written in one node it is written in all the nodes which are present okay and uh, Hadoop cluster containing more than eight data nodes the replication value usually set to three if it is more than eight nodes are there the replication value will be set to three okay and uh, it's not compulsory that the default block size is what is to be copied if 20 KB file is also there that is to be written it will create a block of approximately that much size only that's the second point third point means if there is a bigger size need to be stored like for example 80 MB the default size is 64 MB and the remaining one will be created in a separate block that's how the uh, block uh, replication is done coming to safe mode safe mode is nothing but it cannot be replicated or deleted a mode in which no replication or deletion will happen that is called as HDFS uh, safe mode it enables the name node to perform two important process let's see what are those two important process in safe mode the first one is previous file system are loaded into the new memory previous file system are loaded into the file image the next one is mapping between the blocks and the data nodes is uh, done okay blocking uh, means mapping is done between these two so that at least one copy of the data is available okay so that at least one copy, uh, copy of the data is available this is what you have to write if they ask you about the HD, uh, HDFS block replication and safe mode 
Moving on, we have the fourth question, which is explain uh, rack awareness. What is rack awareness? Rack is nothing but a store of data nodes. Many data nodes will be stored in a rack. Okay. What is rack awareness? Data is getting stored locally. Needs to be organized. It needs to be organized if it is getting stored locally. If it is not organized somewhere else, some data will be there. It will be very hard to retrieve the data. So it will be having three options to do that in three levels. The first is data resides on the local machine, or it resides in the same uh, rack, or it resides on the different rack. Okay. So basically, being aware about these things and writing our code to do this automatically is called as rack awareness. <clears throat> when we go to the last question, we have few co important concepts here which you cannot miss at any cost. So make sure you know these key points very well. I'll be telling you what you need to write an exam from each of these points. Okay. First one is name node high availability. What does it mean? What do you uh, think uh, high availability means? High availability, high availability means every time it is available, right? Name node sometimes it becomes fail. Okay. What happens is why we need high availability. Name node was a single point of failure that could be bring down the entire Hadoop cluster. Name node is the actual manager what which is doing all the things if it gets done at that time the entire cluster will become down so we need some recovery options the solution was to implement name node high availability high availability means if this is also down some other uh, backup will come and it will take its place and perform the operations that is to provide a true failover service okay so for that we'll be using another node called as standby name node standby name node and active uh, new, uh, name node these two are the nodes which are completely similar okay these both are twins they, they have the same feature they have the same data and they have the same operations everything is same this is just a clone of this one the, like that you can think this is just a clone of this one and this has same data as present here what will happen is just this will perform all the operations and when this gets down everything the process whatever has been performed by this one that will be also stored parallelly here and when this fails this will come into the picture and this will be uh, continuing the operation until this comes back okay that's what it is if you have to write in the exam what you will be writing is uh, high availability ha or high availability hadoop cluster has two separate name node machines okay two separate name node machines are there which are those uh, two separate active and standby name node okay each machine is configured with exactly same software and same node machines in the active state and other one is the standby mode active state does all the things which are responsible like the hrgfs operation in the cluster standby name node maintains the enough state to provide a fast failover Moving on to the second one, which is HDFS name node federation. Federation means what? There will be a central government and there will be federates here, right? That is what is called federation. Uh, all these things will be interconnected. Like this will be connected to this one, this will be connected to this one, and so on. That is called as federation. Why is there a need of federation? Federation is needed because many different clusters will be there. They are to be identified as a single group because they are working for the same uh, resource. For that, we will be providing a name for it. Okay, that is called as namespace. An important feature of the HDFS uh, name node, that's your first point, name node federation is that HDFS provides a single namespace. It provides what? A single namespace for the entire cluster managed by a single um, name node. So whenever there is a single name node which is performing all the operations and uh, there are slaves under it, at that time the entire group will be named as a single uh, namespace. Okay. Then what will happen? It will be identified as one single cluster. The resources of the single name determine the size of it. Means if there are more resources, the name size will be more. That's obvious, right? And few of the features are namespace scalability. The HDFS um, uh, cluster storage is horizontally it's uh, increased. Okay, horizontally is increased by adding more um, nodes in the same cluster. That's one of the advantage. It becomes scalable, better performance because if you add more more nodes, it will perform the uh, uh, tasks parallelly. The last one is system isolation. Multiple name nodes enable different categories of application to be distinguished. Okay. So these are the features you got to write in the name node uh, federation. <coughs> Moving on, we have the third one, checkpoints and uh, backup. Before that, uh, the name uh, node one with namespace one and namespace two, different uh, uh, tasks are there, but all are connected with the data nodes. This is called as federation. Many things are connected with one thing. Okay. HDFS checkpoints and backup. What do you understand by the term checkpoint? If you have performed five operations, checkpoint you will be making. If you perform sixth operation and fail, you will come back to fifth operation, right? That is called as checkpoints. So name node stores the metadata of HDFS file system in a file called FS image. In FS image, all the file screenshots will be stored. At this point, you did this, uh, this one. At the next uh, moment of time, you did this one, and so on. So whenever I want to go back to some checkpoint, we'll be using this FS, FS image and going back to that checkpoint. Okay. File system modifications are written to an edit log file. There will be so all the timings written and which uh, position you are at. So it will go back to that one and it will start from there. That is called as HDFS checkpoints. Backup is nothing but it will have all the data stored. If in case uh, something gets failure, all the data will come into the picture. Okay. 
<coughs> next one is HDFS snapshots it's same as backups but it is using a different way of creation uh, the creating the um, snapshot by using HDFS DFS snapshot command okay by using this you will be uh, snapshot uh, capturing the snapshots of, of the same database in different uh, points of time okay therefore the following features snapshots can be taken off a subtree of the file system over the entire file system okay what can be taken is there will be a uh, file here and there will be sub files here so if a snapshot is taken of this one at that time all these files will be stored if this data gets lost we can again retrieve this data using the screenshot snapshot can be used for data backup protection against uh, user errors and dis uh, disaster recovery snapshot creation is instantaneous it will be created instantly blocks on the data are not copied it's not copied blocks it's the original blocks snapshots do not adversely affect the hdfs operations okay these are some of the features of the snapshots last one is the hdfs nfs gateway what do you mean by gateway gateway is nothing but a gate to uh, some other country right so here what we will be doing is hdfs is here so suppose hdfs is here here is your pc okay by using the hdfs nfs gateway you will be able to access the hdfs and perform some operations that's what it is you have first point you have to write is hdfs nfs gateway supports nfs version 3 and enables hdfs to be mounted hdfs is mounted means it will be able to access by the PC okay you can access that as a part of the clients local file system so you can uh, access the HDFS files in the local file system users can browse through the file system through their local file system that provides NFS v3 client compatible OS this is one of the OS feature which is getting provided users can easily download or upload the files and can stream the data directly to the HDFS uh, to the mount point okay so if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel your support helps me make uh, more videos like this and that's all for this video and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the part three